Hey comrades, welcome to the Green Left Weekly Vlog. My name is Blair Vidakovic. The recording cut out last week, so I wasn't able to introduce myself properly, but my name is Blair Vidakovic. I have been a member of Socialist Alliance for a couple months now, and uh, I'm quite experienced in making vlogs, so I thought that I'd make a weekly vlog for um, Green Left Weekly. In any case, we have two stories coming up today, and they're both from Green Left Weekly. Green Left Weekly is a radical left-wing newspaper that publishes every week, obviously in Australia and uh, if you want to stay abreast of progressive issues and left-wing causes you should um, definitely subscribe to Green Left Weekly but I'll have a bit more of a plug at the end of the uh, the two news items that I have. Normally with these vlogs we'll be having a domestic issue and an international issue. I think this week we'll start with the international issue just to mix things up and then the third item at every um, for every vlog will be uh, an activity that um, a Socialist Alliance member uh, participated in, or at least one member participated in. So this week's item is the poetry night that we just had, the Poets of the People night. I thought it was particularly electric, it was absolutely charged, um, it was amazing, it was really really cool to see Monkey Monk and uh, Dobby, two um, First Nations artists give very passionate hip-hop recitals, which was which was really cool. And there were other people as well. But the person that I'll be showing you is Elizabeth Rutledge, but uh, we'll get to that later. So the first issue that I want to talk about today, and you can find all of these articles in Green Left Weekly, of course. I'm basically just summarizing the articles in Green Left Weekly. But I want to talk about the Democratic Federation of Northern Syria. You might know this country. Well, it's not really a country. It's more of a democratic confederation. So it's interesting that this new system that's been set up in Rojava, which is probably what you'd know it as, definitely defies or rejects nationalism, and it's a new kind of um, economic and political organization in northern Syria. So the peak body of the, the Democratic Federation of Northern Syria, or we, we can probably just call it Rojava for the rest of this um, vlog, is the uh, Syrian Democratic Council. And this, econo this uh, political organization originated in the S Syrian uh, civil war that started in the Arab Spring in 2011-2012. And um, so the Kurdish uh, national struggle or the, the Kurdish um, liberation struggle has been going on for a very long time since the 70s. Um, it's been mainly organized or has its intellectual and political roots in the PKK, which was started by Abdullah Ocalan. And uh, famously, um, Abdullah Ocalan, after he was arrested in 1999, wrote um, extensively in prison. Um, the CIA was um, involved in putting him into prison. And um, he looked at the works of Murray Bookchin. So, although Murray Bookchin is a very big influence on um, the PKK and its um, eventual evolution, um, Abdullah Ocalan has created his own political philosophy of uh, democratic confederalism. So, the point of the Kurdish uh, liberation struggle now is not a national struggle, but it's a struggle for armed self-defense. And the main point of Kurdish ethnic struggle or Kurdish self-liberation has now become a more inclusive and multi-ethnic uh, struggle that's been occurring in northern Syria. So things have progressed quite um, differently in northern Syria, and this is particularly reflected in the refugee question that's a very, very pressing issue both in Europe and in the Middle East at the moment. So most recently there was a big um, attack on the border of Syria and Iraq, and it was on uh, refugees who were fleeing into Syria, and they were trying to get to, to Rojava. And this is because refugees have been treated a lot better by the revolution in Rojava. This is a much more democratic revolution. And so um, probably I'll, I'll, I'll end this um, item pretty quickly. But um, you can know the Kurdish self-liberation struggle through the different organizations that have been fighting against ISIS. And even though this uh, revolution was kicked off by activists, in the beginning of the um, Arab Spring in 2011, um, it has taken on a military character. But it hasn't taken on uh, a character that has formed a, a, a hierarchically organized army. Instead, it has formed an alliance called the, um, the SDF. But there's the SDF, and within it, the People's Protection Units, the YPG, YPG and the Women's Protection Units, the YPJ. So this, this um, armed force that now is subordinate to the Syrian Democratic Council um, is, is more of a militia instead of an army, which is, um, which is a, a radical, radically democratic way of organizing an armed, an armed force. So 
In 2014, 50% of the population of Rojava, so that's 2 million people, were refugees. And unlike in Europe, these uh, refugees in Rojava have been given full political rights and there's been a concerted struggle to um, integrate these people into society and give them um, economic support and give them an economic livelihood. So it just goes to show that a revolutionary situation will treat um, refugees and people who are oppressed much, much better than um, oppressive capitalist bureaucratic structures. So that's, that's probably the most we need to say on Rojava, but in any case, Green Left Weekly supports the Rojava revolution. It supports the revolution of the Democratic Federation of Northern Syria, and I think we all should too. The second item that we have today is the domestic issue. And uh, like last week's issue, this domestic issue will be quite economic. But in any case, I want to talk about the federal budget that's just been passed in Australia. And what most of the media have been saying about the budget is that um, it's a left-wing budget. And that's because there was a levy passed against the banks um, on their liabilities. So if banks have liabilities, they will be taxed at 0.06% of those liabilities. And over the next four years, that will amount to $6.2 billion. This has come about because of the struggle to have a buffet rule against the banks. Banks are making massive, massive profits. For instance, last year or the last quarter, um, ANZ made 23%, made a 23% increase in their profits, which is um, ridiculous. That's incredible. That's almost a magical amount of money. But um, if you just focused on that, yeah, you probably would think that the Australian federal budget was a radical leftist budget because um, a small amount of tax was being increased. Um, that's actually a fairly bad way of measuring the political orientation of a budget or who's being or how much, how much tax is being levied, but um, there's actually going to be corporate tax cuts of um, up to or over $64 billion over the next 10 years. So there's actually been a cut in the corporate tax rate. So while banks are being levied a small amount, we're going to be losing a lot more tax in these corporate tax cuts. Not only that, but there's been a huge attack on welfare recipients. Welfare recipients will now be drug tested. And if they um, are found to have been taking drugs, their welfare will be cancelled. And not only that, but welfare quarantining is, has, is also being expanded. These initiatives have been tried overseas and they don't work. So for instance, we spend over $10,000 per recipient of welfare quarantining, which is ridiculous. That's almost as much as the money that goes to the welfare recipient. So this kind of draconian policing of welfare is, is purely there to demonize people who are on welfare and um, really attack the people who are struggling the most in our society, which is um, incredibly disappointing and it, it enrages me. So like I said, it appears that there's loads and loads of cash for demonizing welfare recipients. And this, um, this is completely unfair. This is the opposite of what we should be doing for the people who are most oppressed in society, the most downtrodden. We shouldn't be quarantining their welfare because it doesn't work. We shouldn't be drug testing um, welfare recipients because that doesn't work either. So if you liked any of the analysis of these stories, you should uh, check out Green Left Weekly. It's the only radical left newspaper in Australia that publishes weekly and it has the complete gamut of all sorts of progressive issues that you want to stay abreast of, like strikes. Certain strikes in Australia have now expanded. There's an excellent international focus in Green Left Weekly as well. For instance, there's articles on East Timor in this current issue. There's also articles on Venezuela, the Venezuelan revolution, which our newspaper is the only radical left newspaper in Australia that supports the, re the, the pink revolution, the pink tide revolution that's happened in uh, Latin America. So make sure you pick up a subscription for Green Left Weekly. The cheapest subscription and the most, uh, the best value subscription is $10 for six issues. And that's an issue that I like to buy my friends and it's an issue that I like to give to my family as well. You can also get six months, I think three months and 12 months subscriptions. There's even solidarity subscriptions. And I think you can also get a subscription for two years, which is really good. In any case, we'll move on to the third section of today's vlog, and that is uh, a, a poem that has been recited by Elizabeth Rutledge, and I thought this was an excellent anti-capitalist poem. I think it really captures exactly what nausea and what kind of um, anxiety you get under capitalism, which is really good. Constant questioning, constant need for modification of your body, and constant um, dislocation and displacement of your identity under capitalism as it gets buffeted around commodity exchange. All right, comrades, I'll see you next week. The end is nigh, so let's all get high and go shopping. <laughs>
Oh, Monsanto, IMF, World Bank, you paragons of shame. You CEOs of rape and pillage and gain. You overpaid entertainers, you bankers, you inbred elite, all you royalty, cocaine, inhaling a feat. Your reptilian aristocracy, purveyors of defeat. Your Neanderthal sportsmen, corrupt politicians, torturous military, dictators and police. You 1% that rules the world with lies and stealth. Predators hiding in your citadels of wealth. The rest of us, so tame and apathetic, whilst you feather your nest, we continue to rest, to digress, with all our stuff. Insatiable shopping, consuming fast junk, we're like Wally's fat families, we're blimps and we're hogs, or we're starving for fashion, as thin as stray dogs, mutilating, carving ourselves to stay young. We'll put shit up our noses and poison in our veins. We'll find a thousand different ways to die, to dampen the pain. Slowly, quickly, no time to think, just give me another hit of my addiction. I need, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need, I can't breathe. I'm stifled, I'm lazy, I'm angry, I'm bored, I'm so fucking sick of this life. I'm edgy, I'm flawed, but still I keep working at a job I can't stand to put more crap on the table, watch more crap on the pops, to keep on the treadmill, I'm trapped like a rat in the hole. But still I keep going. So I drink myself stupid every weekend. I drink myself stupid again and again, then I've needed sex with a person I can't see because I'm so blind and drunk that I'll do it again and again and again and again and again and again and again just get so out of it that I can maintain the fantasy that this person I'm with is like those on TV but in the morning just like me they're not perfect not Pepsi not glossy not thin this makes me feel worthless so off I go again I want sugar and salt I want chocolate and drugs I want kisses and sex and another tattoo I'll use you screw you push you aside there's nowhere to run and nowhere to hide I want coffee Speed, uppers and downers, I want truffles, fine wine, Colombian coke, more fashion, more diamond, just can't get enough. I can't get my fill, I can't, 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 can't sleep. When I'm hardly awake, please knock me out with a sleeping pill. Then wake me with prime time, gossip and news. Don't let me stop for a moment, keep me confused. Don't let me question the idiocy of this life that advocates insanity, cruelty and war. Just let me keep dusting the truth that I can ignore. I'll keep stuffing my face and talking shit, drinking and fucking more technology. I want it all now, I need it all now, but none of it satisfies. Can't get none of that. Can't get no, na na na, satisfaction. Though I've tried and I've tried, none of it makes me happy. Why is that? I'm tired and I'm depressed, I'm thin and I'm fat and I've forgotten myself again. I'm tired and I'm thin. I know, I'm tired and I'm thin, I'm depressed and I'm fat. I want to get off but I'm caught in motion. I have to keep moving, keep up with the times, get more information, be in the know, keep up with the Joneses, go with the flow. I want a pad in the city and a spread in the bush. I want the latest hairstyle and the latest look. I want a chauffeur, a cleaner, a gardener, a cook. I want Gary and George to serve me Chateaubriand, followed by creme brulee and a load of croc and bouche. But wait, there's more. Then I'll go traveling, stay in the finest hotels, waited on by paupers who, whose own lives are held, though the heir to the throne of Great Britain claims. The slums of Mumbai are the place to see if you really want to be ecstatically happy. <laughs> though none of the Windsors has moved there yet to shit in open sewers with giant rats and rabbit dogs. So I regret to inform you that I will carry on buying and selling and getting high until the tipping point is reached and humanity <coughs> implodes. No bomb was needed. We silently imploded. Our decomposing debris coating the earth like a giant midden. Feeding once more the natural world. The age of Kali Yuga is over. The earth is restored. Its beauty once hidden or ignored by the waste of our kind. Too sleepy, too robotic, to stay.
stand up and declare enough is enough. The madness stops here. And maybe this time we'll find a way through an evolution of spirit, a story renewed. You and I, wayfarers, formed from muck and DNA, a poetic experiment, a lowbrow low joke, blind seers, homeless shamans, atrophied wizards, hollow warriors of the spirit. We are, we are the people we are waiting for. Calibial knots of light, atoms and particles and 12 dimensional strings that hold the universe together, sharing consciousness with everything. Open the door, still your mind, take action, lest we turn this beautiful blue planet into Orwell's ecology of frantic information, Eliot's robotic wasteland, Dante's inferno, and the elders they weep, and the wise they pray as they consider with care what their actions might mean seven generations from here, where our ancestors rejoice in a timeless land and children still reach for the stars. Thank you very much.